Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope. Today we are going to be bringing you a right for you, wrong for you on Wild Tiled West by Dire Wolf Games. Now, this is a game that we picked up ourselves at Gen Con. Yep. We were very excited about it. Polyomino is one of those genres that we've been exploring more and more recently. Jesse really likes the Western theme, so I thought that would be up his alley. Dire Wolf puts out very, very solid games. They put out Clank, they've put out Dune Imperium, they put out a lot of games. Yeah. And so we thought this would be one that we wanted to try. It was a new release at Gen Con, and now it is available on their site. So our Right For You, Wrong For You series is a series here on the channel where we break down seven categories we keep in mind when deciding if a game is going to stay or enter our collection. We talk about the overview. We talk about the theme. We talk about the accessibility. We talk about the gameplay. Why are you smiling? <laughs> you go into all these details when you, you make it sound all flourishing. You want to take over? I stuffed at accessibility. We take a quick sniff of the <laughs> modes of play. Yeah. We analyze the innovation. We go ahead and dissect the price. And at the very end of this video, we will give our verdict. Give you a power lift of a verdict. Whether or not this game was in fact right or wrong for us. Yes. You just kept saying talk about, talk about, talk about. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I add you have adjectives. Lots and lots of adju ad adju adjunctives. Adjunctives. Descriptive words is what you do. I do the talking stuff real good, y'all. So overview. This is going to be a competitive point salad. Polyomino placement, tile drafting and placement game. We are each going to start out with a variable player board. They're going to be asymmetric in the powers and abilities, or you can play it without powers and abilities on the same side, but no two boards are laid out in the same way. You are going to be rolling dice per player count. So for two players, we rolled two green and one blue dice, and then you're going to be placing them out on their locations on the board. So the river dice are gonna go over there and the green dice are going to go like that. The numbers are upside down and right side up. Both of us were like, this is not <laughs> gonna work for us. Yeah. There we are. And then in player order, you are each going to alternate and take a tile. So the player who rolled the dice is going to have first pick of any of the tiles. If it is a green die, you have first pick of the tile that is right in the depot right next to where the dice is sitting. And if it is a blue die in the river dice, you have always first pick of the tile of that is right next to it. But you can also pay gold that you are mining throughout the game to skip over and jump and take a further tile down the line. Now, a lot of these tiles are going to have special abilities, different ways of scoring. They're going to give you resources or put things like cowboys and bandits down onto your board to allow you to have some other special victory conditions. The way you play on your board is different from a lot of other polyomino games. It's not about spatial tightness. Instead, it's about efficiently using your pieces to get to wherever you need to get before the game's over. On your board, you're going to be wanting to cover different symbols and you're going to have to leave other symbols open. You want to cover your pickaxes so that you can increase your mining and get more resources, more gold. You're going to want to cover your bullets so that your sheriffs can shoot your bandits. You are going to want to get gold just as a great reward itself. You're going to want to cover these brown tile spaces and get single, it's the only single tile space that will allow you to fill in these little areas on the board. You're going to want to cover all the horseshoe shoe symbols because you lose points at the end of the game for everyone that is left uncovered and those are all the ones that you're going to want to cover you're going to have to leave uncovered all of the green patches all of the mountains all of the mines and you are going to try and create these massive areas you will also see that there's these shaded areas that are these cities if you completely cover an entire city you will get the points shown up there for wayne ranch and for redford yeah, so it's a game about efficiently placing down tiles, about taking the tiles that you need and making hard decisions around when and how you spend your gold to get some of those specialized tiles that you find mostly in the middle in the yeah. river. You're also going to have other scoring objectives, some ally cards that give you all well, that extra bonus for having taken out all the sheriffs or having enough small buildings across your town and your city. These will change the way that you approach the game and change how you actually try to collect tiles and score. Along with that, the asymmetric nature of each one of these boards really does change the game up quite a bit. Do you want flying saucers? Do you need to correct, connect a path from one end of your board to another? Do you want to go gambling at the local saloon and spend a lot of gold while doing so in, in order to uh, potentially score a ton of points at the end of the game? There's a lot of choice here and a lot of different ways you can approach and play. 
The gameplay is actually pretty quick. You're going to be taking rounds and tile drafting on all the spots that have an orange arrow, and then you are going to have a shootout when you come to this. You're going to each look at your board and see how many uncovered bandits do you have still on your board, or how many of them have you had a sheriff take a shot at and have a tombstone on. The person who has more uncovered will lose two points. The person who has succeeded in eliminating the bandits from their town in the wild, wild west will gain two points, and that gets increased throughout the four chapters throughout the four seasons of the game. So if you're looking for a polyomino game that has a lot of general variability when it comes to session to session, has unique powers and abilities in some of the titles you're putting down on the game board, and changes the way that you approach playing polyomino from a tight constructed puzzle to a how do I get across the board and cover up what I need to cover up as efficiently and quickly as possible. This game might be right for you. Then Wild How West might be right for you. Let's talk about the theme. You're, you're settling the Wild West. Man, I'll tell you, <laughs> the thing for us that stood out initially was the beautiful artwork across this game. This yeah. game is rich in theme, from the buildings that have different special abilities that feel accurate to what they're doing, to some of the endgame scoring cards. The artwork on these characters are some of Amazing. my favorite artwork yep. in a Western-style game. I do like animals. I, I grew up on Redwall, so if you you know give human character traits to any type of furry little creature, I'm going to be engaged. Yeah. But I also think that the asymmetric powers and the way you actually are encouraged to play the game by avoiding the valleys and building out these different cities and distant areas fits the Western theme really, really well. It's not an overly narrative-driven game. In fact, I would have a hard time telling the story of the town that I just built up. But I do enjoy playing, and it does give me a feeling that I'm sitting here building out this Western-themed world. I think any other theme could have been put on the game, and it would yeah. have been fine. I think the Western theme works very nicely for what it does. Yeah, I would have to say that I agree with all the points you made. I liked yeah. corralling my cows and and pick and like corralling them and getting points for how many cows I had in, in a single pasture. I liked finding finding ways for my sheriffs to sneakily shoot down my bandits. Yeah. Most of the time I was not able to get my bandits. That was something Jesse was a lot better at. I like the special abilities. The pink ones give you endgame scoring objectives, like the blue ones are in-game instant bonuses. The red ones you need to cover completely to get the reward. And so I like the different feeling of the different tiles and the, the actual tile shapes as well varied a lot. Yeah, so as far as theme goes, which, were theme. you talking about theme, theme there? Yeah. That's, okay, That good. was my way of talking as about As far theme. as theme goes, if you're looking with something that has really nice artwork, a decent bit of flavor, but not a lot of flavor text or theme specifically, then this game might be right for you. Shiro, let's talk about accessibility. How easy is this game to get to the table? How easy is it for people to play? This game is accessible. I yeah. would say that anyone greater than 7 to 10 years old could start playing it. The concepts are relatively simple. You're going to be rolling the dice and picking up a tile and placing it out on your board. Your tile placement restrictions are not the most complex. You have to start on a specific spot on your board. Uh, I was like, this one, I didn't play with this board. You have you usually have an X that you have to start placing your tiles out and you have to start placing there, but otherwise, you're not super limited. It gets more complex as you're thinking about the nuance of strategy of how to corral your cows and get the points for them before combining their pastures into one big pasture. Everything is also iconography driven except for the asymmetric powers yeah. on the player boards themselves. And so as long as you know how to play the game, you should be able to play with anyone with any reading level or, or language barrier that might be approached. On top of that, the game setup is actually really smart. They have these two boards which store in the game box themselves just like this. So I can pick up, move around, and not have to worry about reshuffling or reorganizing all of these tile pieces out and onto the table. You modify However, it for player counts. You have to take out a certain amount of tiles for each player count. However, there is quite a bit of fiddly fiddliness when it comes to setting up and resetting up this board. Yeah. And actually the mid-game rolling the dice mechanic makes it so there's a bit of upkeep that requires you to maintain a structure like you see in front of us. Yep. Any other notes on accessibility? I don't think so. Get that ending line then. If you are looking for a mid-weight, uh, relatively mid-weight game that is accessible to most player counts that is not blocked by any language barriers, then this game... It, it, might, it might be right for you. They do it. Let's talk about gameplay. Now, not how to play the game, but what about the game might make this game right for you or wrong for you? And I have a big one. Okay. 
I don't like the dice. I don't know a better solution to allow people to draw tiles out of the game board, but I found the dice rolling and uh, limited selection nature of this game to be more frustrating than I found it to be enjoyable. It's I... fiddly to roll the dice. Yeah. It's fiddly to place them into where they go. And after you're done with that, it restricts your ability so much to get access to certain tiles. Some people might like that a lot. I found it to be more bothersome. So for me, the frustrating part came when certain numbers were never rolled in an entire game. And so certain tiles became inaccessible. Tiles that are in the green area, if that number doesn't get rolled, you cannot skip ahead with the green dice. You cannot choose a different depot. You are really restricted to the randomness of the dice, which for some people might be right for them. For me, it was not right. The other mechanic that we talked about briefly is that we went into the game thinking it was a very tight polyomino puzzle yeah. and not as much of a spread out and try and meet objectives and point scoring puzzle. I I felt a little tricked by the game. I was looking for a really tight polyomino situation. And while I do like like variable scoring objectives and solid point scoring games in nature and like set collection with like the cards on the board, I wanted it to be tighter on my board and felt like I was making interesting decisions on how my pieces fit together. I feel like they limited your availability of tiles here while opening up your availability here, whereas in the polyamory games that we enjoy, will, our access yes. is more open, but our board itself the is more restricted and limited. The tactical decision of which limited. piece to take yeah. is a lot more of the decision making, whereas like sometimes it was just like, well, I guess I'll take this and put it somewhere. I will say this though. Higher player counts, this might get a little bit more interesting. We haven't yep. played at high, high player counts yet because you have more dice that get rolled onto yep. the table. And then on top of that, this is a big one for me. I really like the asymmetric player powers of the polyomino boards. They don't change the script too much, but just yep. enough that I felt like I was playing a unique puzzle every time. And the way that I scored for that end game victory changed from one to another. I played two specifically, one of which was a gambling one where I was trying to connect and spend a lot of gold in order to unlock certain cards. Scored completely different from one where I had to connect roads from two opposite ends in order to get some bonuses mid game. I liked that, I enjoyed that, I found that really rewarding. I think the variability with the boards is really, really interesting. Like you said, each one feels entirely different. It isn't too complicated with the new mechanics that it's involving. It'll have its weight in the upper corner, but like Jesse said, they each feel different and they each give you something slightly different to focus on. Yeah. I really like these cards. They were my scoring objectives that I was looking for. So like tombstones, four to six tombstones, you get six additional points, seven to eight, 12 points, and nine plus you get 18 points. And so these can make a really big difference. You get a lot of points from your end game scoring objectives. Yeah. Oftentimes the game winning decision might be some of those end game scoring. You might have gotten to like 50, 60 points and you'll usually circle the board again and get up to 100 to 120 yeah. points in a game just by end game scoring objectives so as this, far as gameplay goes this also does play short though we were able to knock out a bunch of games in a relatively quick time frame and so if you're looking for something that is not overly long and doesn't overstay its welcome the amount of turns actually goes mm -hmm. by pretty quickly i would almost recommend playing two or so games in every session just yeah. because the fiddliness gets a lot easier when you have a group of people putting it back together as opposed to getting it set up for the first time. So it rewards multiple plays in a single session. And I think more players will make keeping track of whose turn it is to roll the dice and whose turn it is to draft the first tile a lot easier to keep track of because there's more people you're passing that token around instead of just so, back and forth. gameplay. Yes. I'll if you're looking for a game... You say it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a game that has a dice or a drafting mechanic that for us wasn't quite a fit, then this game might not be right for you. That being said, if you're looking for a game that's a little bit more of an open-ended polyomino system that restricts the market where you're actually drawing your tiles, and you want to play at potentially higher player counts than the two-player experience that we've had predominantly, then yeah. this might be, be right for you. It might be right for you. Shira, moving on to modes of play... We only really have limited experience in this area. Yeah, we play competitively at two players. There is a solo mode that you can play. I'm kind of interested in checking it out. I can't say that I'm not. I, I might give that at least one play. Yeah, um, but otherwise, those are the main those are the main modes of play. If you're playing competitive against your fellow players or competitive against the game, yeah. trying to score as many points as possible. We already said we think higher player counts might be a better experience yep. overall than we've had, but two players still wasn't a bad game. And it did play very, very quick at a two-player count. This board is double-sided for solo and for two play and for multiple players. Yep. Yeah. Okay, moving on down to innovation. Is this game innovative? If it is, how? If not, does it matter? 
I, the innovative part that I really like is the organization and component structure. It reminds me of a game like Planet Unknown, though. It does. Um, I really like how, yes, yeah, so Planet Unknown, I mean, I would still say that's innovative. Yeah. Um, I would still say that not every game is doing that. I like the way that this was organized. I like the, I think it's I'll triple or what. quadruple layer board. If they'd done a Planet Unknown style, like, drafting mechanic where everyone around the table is getting Spinning. some type of... You see, I, I just, I love, there's other ways to give yeah. random tiles to people that I, I enjoy more. One person is choosing the deep bone planet and you're not leaving it up to the fate yeah. of dice. And I think that makes that difference. And then you have to use whatever is set in front of you, but you always have choices. Yeah. I do like that. I think that is a really good comparison. But innovative wise, I really like these tiles. I like how they stack up. I like how they store. I do think that they are fiddly at times. And first of all, you had to punch all the cardboard and organize them all. They don't necessarily say... I almost wish that like on a little corner they would have had the number depot that sure. it was closest located to because sometimes you're looking for the same two tile size piece and yeah. it can be in numerous locations. But this was really nifty. It stores well in the box. They don't spill all over the place. I, yeah, I, I don't know that anything for me is specifically or notably innovative about the game. The best comparison I have is honestly a game like Planet Unknown, yeah. which is another polyomino kind of randomly selected game with asymmetric powers and abilities that have different scoring maps that you've built out. And that game, I think, just does a lot of things first. I think that game is a little heavier than and this. And a lot of things arguably different and better than yeah. what this is initially doing. Yeah. Um, so it's not innovative. It does fill a genre and it does fill that category of polyomino style games that some people might be looking for. So if they really like Planet Unknown, yeah. I wouldn't not encourage them to go check this one out as yeah. well. I think like you said, Planet Unknown is a little bit heavier, a little bit more complex, and also uh, it it probably, it's a, it's a much tighter polyomino puzzle, which might lead to people being a little bit more AP oriented or a little bit more frustrated with it. I think another difference is that, I mean, just in, it practically planned and unknown was kickstarted um, and it was crowdfunded and so it might be harder to get your hands on. Could they be. just came out with a new expansion and this is, I believe, straight to retail. Yeah. Um, they did not kickstart this. This is available on their website um, and Plan Unknown will have upgraded components that you might not be able to get in the secondhand market. This is what you're seeing comes in the box. So if you're looking for a game that does some things very cool, some things may be the first few that you've seen out there on the market and is coming directly to retail, then this game might be right for you. But if you're looking for something that is specifically innovative in the genre of polyomino games this probably isn't doing that much unique and what it is doing unique might not be for fit. the better so that's a breakdown you let us know if this game sounds like something that might be right for you or wrong for you and now our price verdict. oh <laughs> and now the price and now the price <laughs> this is going for 65 dollars on dire wolf's website mm. hearing that what do you think in terms of the price point yeah, of the game? Yeah, because I was the one who picked this up at, the, at I, I, think so. that, I think that's a really reasonable price. I think eventually we're going to see it come down to about $45, $50 when it comes to the wider market. For the components that you get, for the double layer boards that you have to organize everything, how easy it's going to be Wooden to get tokens. to the table, and how different every gameplay experience is, I'm not going to shy away at that $50 price point. I think $65 plus shipping might be getting a little bit higher than I want to pay for it. Yep. Um, but I don't, I don't flinch at that. That doesn't sound bad to me. Yep. So, what do you think? I I would agree. I think 55 I would be very comfortable with. Um, after playing it, I think 65 might be a little bit on the higher end, and I would like to see it come down a little bit. So if you're looking to buy our copy for about $55, <laughs> this game might be right for you. No, if, either run out and grab it now if you're excited because you've been watching this, or know that the market is going to have some copies get out there that are not going to be quite as expensive um, as that initial retail release. Uh, that now being said... Now our verdict. Our verdict on Wild Tile West. Man, I really want and wanted to like this game a lot. I, I was looking for a crunchy, tight, heavier yeah. polyomino game. And that might be the problem. I, I entered the game with expectations. I think I, I did the same thing. It came from a really well-established and reputable publisher who makes heavy games like yeah. Clank Legacy, Clank. They're, they're not carrying, heavy, heavy, but they're... They're heavy, heavy, but they do have... They're family strat heavy. They're family they're heavy. They're family heavy and they have strategy involved. And I think that this is... Uh, step up a different step away from their usual retinue of games 
and I definitely had higher expectations for it. I was really excited. It was really talked up as like a new polyamino style placement with a Wild West theme. I think it has really cool like components, but ultimately it's not going to be a right fit. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, the one thing that for me could have saved or changed or, or brought this game back around would be something that, that changed the way that these boards were laid out change the tiles that I had in them. I wanted more cool powers. I wanted more buildings. I wanted to feel like I was creating, like if you're gonna give me a game that's about loosely placing polyomino pieces and building really cool cities and, and towns, then this game does that, but it, it doesn't do it very well. Like I get excited about some tiles yeah. the first time I played them. And then after that, we know like, I'm sorry, Places like the uh, the sawmill over here, yeah, one of the best tiles in the game. It just lets you select everything. It lets you select a tile when you're frustrated at your tile picks. And so that's that's my biggest thing is that we've played many games of this so far. I am interested in trying out the solo yeah. game mode. I might actually do a solo video here on the channel. I'm considering that because I, I do enjoy the puzzle, but I don't feel like there's a lot left for me to explore. And that's the big thing that for me is is sort of the the end of the game. There isn't a lot left in the game that I haven't already done. I've, we've played and seen most of the asymmetric powers. Yeah. Uh, we've explored a, about every tile and every tile combination I can think of. I could continue playing it, but when I compare it to other games that are in this genre, we've already got some Holly Amino games that, that are head and shoulders above this one. Yeah. And I think Planet Unknown is is just, I mean, it's just gonna take this one out of the water. Yeah. If I have both those games in my collection, I'm probably going to be grabbing Planet Unknown before I grab Wild Hell West off the shelf. Yeah. I noticed that towards the end of the game, I was feeling like I was given a choice between two tiles I did not want. 100%. And it that, almost always ended with, with a lackadaisical choice. It felt very anticlimactic. Our last two, three rounds in that last in that last chapter felt very anticlimactic. Whereas in most games, I like the feeling of I'm building up for a really big I ending. I need that last like, I need thing. that last piece and then I'll be able to have accomplished all of this. And for me, based on the dice rolls, sometimes I wasn't able to accomplish that yeah. one thing that would have made that really cool experience and there was no mitigating that. I was there more was... likely to get the two blank tiles in the last yeah. round of the game than I was anywhere before that. Yeah. Yeah, because covering up horseshoes, I mean, it will save yeah. you points. Yeah, and so I, I think that even a gameplay mechanic that allowed us to mitigate that that final three or four rounds of tile drawing, mm -hmm. like let, make the board open to us, just have us pay gold, or you know, make it so that you can you can always trade three gold for the tile of your dreams. Right, like, I mean something that, that is like a simple that. mechanic of like just gold can trade for a tile that you just have no access to. Yeah. Um, because like some tiles really did not come out throughout the entire game. And that's your own fault. If you don't, there's there's ways to make it a little bit tighter, but I think the combination of lack of control over tile selection, fiddliness with cleanup, setup, and the dice rolling during the middle of the game, combined with the fact that it never had those moments that felt really really satisfying, and the end game came a little flat. Yeah. This is it's not it's not going to stay in our collection. It's not 100 percent right for us. I can see a lot of people, though, when they first are getting into polyomino games, yeah, liking really this. enjoying this. Yeah. Some comparable games. I know we talked about Planet Unknown being yep. one. If you do like polyomino puzzles, there's Baron Park. Foundations there's of Rome. Ten Penny Parks. There's Foundations of Rome. There's My City, My Island. If you're looking for legacy yep. components that have polyomino placement, there are a lot of my... Project L is another polyomino. There's a lot of polyomino games out there. And this one falls into the marketplace of being unique and being, I think, better than a variety of those. Like, My City is one of those that was right for us. Yeah. But I think this is a better game, a better puzzle, a better single session. But the yes. overall experience of the legacy journey made My City more worthwhile. Yes. That's, the, that's the hard thing for me. I think my favorites have been and are going to continue to be some of the Kickstarter pieces that we've seen come out. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, talking something like Foundations of Rome, which is just ostentatious in its yeah. display and presentation, is still going to beat out a game uh, that's, that's popping out of the market and coming directly to retail. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's because the fans get a chance to playtest and develop before it's actually out there. I don't know if it's but because, input in. you know, the, the, the component upgrades, because both those games are way more expensive yes. than this. Yes. I don't know if it's because of that. Um, but, but I think for its price and in its genre, I think this will be a good fit for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see it. 
Okay, there you have it. Our right for you, wrong for you, our verdict on Wild Pal West. Yes. So let us know down in the comment section down below. Is this game right for you? Have you been enjoying playing it? Did you snag a copy at Gen Con? And what are, are you your thoughts? Go try to get a copy yourself, either immediately or when that price lowers just a little bit. Whatever the case, though. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time.